Thank you, Robert. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Blumi, I must say, if I wouldn't be already a passionate Porsche driver, I definitely would become one after your presentation. Uh, was quite inspiring, I must say. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm quite happy to be here uh, today because I see a lot of our suppliers here. I see a few Adidas employees. I see a few former Adidas employees. I see a few of our competitors. And I even see a few of consumers because I saw a few people who are wearing our shoes this morning, which obviously is uh, highly appreciated. Normally I wear our products as well, but somehow I get told to dress up for this event, so sorry for that if I'm coming with my suit. Uh, Professor Evans said it this morning that you spoke already yesterday about efficiency and mindset change. So some of what you hear from me this morning will be repetitive, so sorry for that. Uh, but just take it that we all think in the same direction. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me share a few thoughts of our industry with you this morning. An industry which is characterized by continuous innovation and changes, by exciting emotions, victories and losses, by huge global media coverage, and by enormous public attention. It is the passion and the excitement for the sporting goods industry that make us all here in the room give our best in our companies every single day. And each one of you here in the room plays an important role in this big, big game. And it's thanks to the World Federation of Sporting Goods Industry that we can share and can discuss strengths and challenges in our sector at events like this here today. And the topic on our agenda for this morning is one that usually doesn't get a lot of attention. Integration design and manufacturing or bringing them closer together is something that largely happens behind the scenes. Much more often we all are provide business facts and numbers to our shareholders, to our investors, to our analysts and to the media. But I think Manufacturing and design is an area that usually deserves much more attention and especially much more attention in the future because it can do a lot for all of us going forward. After giving you a brief uh, insight into the history of Adidas, I would like to uh, extend then on two aspects of this topic a little bit deeper. First one, what are the biggest benefits of closer integrating design and manufacturing? And second one, what are the biggest obstacles in doing so? But before I do so, let me give you a brief introduction to our company. Every great story has a beginning, as we heard already before. Our once started in a small town in Bavaria, after manufacturing first prototype in his mother's laundry, Adi Dassler registered the Gebrüder Dassler Sport Schuhfabrik in 1924, and being an avid athlete by himself, embarked on the mission to provide athletes with the best possible equipment. In 1949, one years later than Porsche, he registered Adidas as a company. And some of you might remember the victory of the German football national team in the Football World Cup in 1954, when Germany beat the unbeatable Hungarians in a thrilling final. Rainy weather and a muddy pitch were the perfect ground for the new football shoes with a revolutionary shoe sole system invented by Adi Dassler, the so-called screw in studs. And this final was a breakthrough for Adidas as a brand, for Adi Dassler as an innovator, and for us as an undisputable connected company to football. And in the Federation, we are working with uh, all of our partners. Therefore, I don't want to forget to mention our competitor in Herzog and Aura. Back in 1960 and in 1970s, the sporting goods industry was characterized by two brands, Adidas founded by Adi Dassler and Puma, the company of his brother Rudolf. And I by myself have been a passionate athlete and sports fan ever since I was a little boy playing football in my hometown. And for us back then, there was only these two sporting companies where we looked to. And they both had factories, mostly in Europe, but also many in Germany. 
and distributed sport shoes, apparels, and accessories. And it was until the 1970s when another competitor came into the picture and started his own success story by distributing running shoes. But this is a different story. <laughs> Over the last decades, I have not only seen our competitors change, but also the entire industry landscape, as well as the world, all around us. For the Adidas group, however, certain basics have remained the same. Adidas was a passionate inventor and he had his own vision, which still holds true at the Adidas group today. Only the best for the athlete. And he wanted to make sports products which fulfill the demands of every sports category. Because Adidas was convinced that the one for all approach wouldn't be sufficient and that he would constantly have to hunt for new materials, new techniques, and new production methods to satisfy the need of the ever-changing sports world. And this, ladies and gentlemen, brings me to my first topic. Why do we need to bring design and manufacturing closer together, and what will be the benefits out of this task? And the answer, in my opinion, is threefold, and it's quite simple. It's cost, it's speed, and it's efficiency. So let me start with cost. We all may have always been cost conscious in the past, but in order to face future challenges, we will have to work even harder. The global sports market is highly competitive, and we are all aligned basically with the same factors. And many of us work with suppliers in their business model, Skilled labor and high quality results need proper rewarding. And if I speak for the Adidas Group, we work in good and most long lasting partnerships with more than 1,200 suppliers around the world. In Asia, we find the necessary capacity, resources, and a well trained workforce. Nevertheless, we are observing the market quite closely. And currently, fast rising labor costs are a true challenge for the industry because we all know that we won't be able to pass this on to the consumer completely. And the way to mitigate a large portion of this rising cost is to improve our internal processes and particularly in design and manufacturing. And if you take into account that the biggest part of the product costs in our industry are already built in design followed by the cost of manufacturing, you naturally look for a closer alignment and potential synergies on the interfaces of these two parts. Besides the aspect of cost, speed is becoming more and more important. In the overall design and development process, we have to become faster. And this starts with thinking of the manufacturing process in the very moment a product is designed. Removing the unnecessary speed bumps in a product creation is definitely into our focus. And this span from design to development and into sourcing. And I will tell you why I do believe we all have to become faster. Speed is what the consumer is asking from us. New styles, new trends, New colors and fabrics, our consumer wants to be freshness every day, every minute, on a constantly basis. And we all have a highly and global fragmented supply chain with a lot of interfaces. Processes tend to slow us down, and anything we can do to smoothen the interactions with the value chain is definitely helpful to get closer to our consumer. And design and manufacturing acting almost as one in the creation process is definitely a speed booster in our market. And last but not least, I want to speak about the efficiency resulting from a close partnership between design and manufacturing. And efficiency in this case largely shows in the environmental benefits that this partnership can create. Environmental aspects have become more and more important in our industry. And remember, a few years ago, the vast majority and the vast perception to the consumer goods sector was that, 
While most people were sensitive to environmental aspects, they would not be ready to pay a higher price for an eventually environmentally sound product. But this, ladies and gentlemen, has clearly changed. Sustainability has moved up in the consumer's list of expectations towards products. Brands which are considered sustainable in their business practices are definitely better off. And for our industry, this means that we need to embed sustainability into our whole value chain throughout all design and development phases as well as in the manufacturing and the distribution process. Let's face it, the industry, our industry, is clearly in the spotlight. Multiple stakeholders, be it NGOs, government, consumer groups, or analysts, they all are asking for a sustainable footprint. Reporting initiatives such as the Dow Jones Sustainability Index play an important role in getting more and more importance every day in our business. And I am proud to say that the Adidas Group is one of the world's most sustainable companies and has been granted numerous awards, as you can see on the slide behind me. It all counts. Fair labor condition, conditions, less use, usage of water, less emissions from transport, and less waste. And I am absolutely convinced that a large part of the potential for these savings lies in the design and the manufacturing process. For example, by using virtualization in the product creation process, getting rid of physical samples and reducing the transportation emissions significantly. Or by looking into new manufacturing techniques like the knitting, where a shoe upper can be made out of one piece and therefore con considerably reducing waste. However, all of this requires design and manufacturing to work closer together and adapt new ways of thinking, creating, and producing. And ladies and gentlemen, our planet is worth it, and it will definitely benefit from it. I hope you all will agree with me that there is a lot of potential in a closer collaboration between design and manufacturing for all of us here in this room, and also for our customers, and even more importantly, for our consumers. However, as always, it's easier said than done. So what are the biggest obstacles in bringing design and manufacturing closer together? Let me start with the consumer. And I often hear in our industry that we all talk about and claim that the consumer has to be in the center of everything we do. But do we really always put our consumer into the center? Can we already today read what the consumer of tomorrow will ask from us so that we can adapt internally and get prepared? Are we open to the innovation and progress that consumer demands from us? Or isn't it much more the case that we stick to the traditional processes and procedures? Have we already embraced the opportunities of the information and technological world outside? Think about your own children. They grew up in a totally different world today, with ultimate connectivity and communication. And we can see already the first examples of the digital world and the sports products coming closer and closer together. Be it a data collecting watch I have around my wrist that helps me to become a better runner, or any type of an app that helps and that connects with the shoes I am wearing. Along with these products, we will also see totally new business models in the future. And maybe some of us will still produce shoes in the future. But maybe the real money will be made with other business models. Also, consumers will have a much stronger influence in the way the companies act. And we, we all together, we have now the chance to create the future. But this requires new strategies and frameworks for innovation inside of all of our companies. And we have to respond to our consumers and to the trends they create by bringing in new products, new materials, or just new approaches how we do business. And we all know and see it every day that the shopping behavior of the consumers are changing. And it will change continuously. 
As technology moves on, it will only be a matter of time until consumers will print their individually designed product at a local store nearby or even at their home. And maybe in the future, certain business models will be based on selling the construction data and consumers take it from there. The technology is already available, but we need to find ways to proactively apply to it in our industry. I know there are a lot of questions around it, but we have to make sure that we open up our minds for innovation and keep an eye on what this could mean to our product and our creation process. Let me come to technology. Technology, and more specifically, IT connectivity, is something I also see as a major obstacle for bringing design and manufacturing closer together. And as far as I know, we all have made significant progress by exploring manufacturing technologies as well as new design software for our industry. However, the connectivity of those is yet a big challenge. And if we have platforms that were able to read designs, technical product data, material codes, and then process all this information into manufacturing, we could see ourselves quite lucky. But to put it into simple words, the reality is that the systems most often don't talk to each other. A designer works with a software that, is, that it is not easily connectable with what the developer needs and with what the supplier needs to get the product done. Technology could produce, as I said before, already knitted shoes in 3D already. We have just not yet linked our design, development and manufacturing world to this. And this is just only one example. I'm sure that at some point in time, technology will give us all the opportunities which we are not able to envision today, but for now, I see the basic work that needs to be done in this area that it is still a challenge and a certain obstacle. So let me come to my last point. And my last point is what I think is one of the major hurdles we need to take on top of that. And as said, systems more often don't speak to each other and don't speak the same language in the world of design and in the world of manufacturing. But to be very frank and very open, the same applies to people in both areas. And I say it with a smile because it is also quite naturally. naturally. A designer have and should have a different view on product creation than a developer or a manufacturing engineer. They all have different tasks to fulfill. That's clear. But if we want to reap the benefit from the cost-saving potential, the speed advantage, and the environmental efficiency, and bring them all closer together, we need to make them understand each other even better as they are trying to do today. And this, in my opinion, is probably the biggest task which we have on hand today. Mindsets can't be changed overnight. That's quite sure, for sure. And it's a long-term process. And I'm not saying that design and manufacturing don't interact in a good way already today. However, coming back to my earlier points, the collaboration between these two needs to be supported by connectivity of their respective system and by the strong demands which our consumer will put on us in the future. After all, our consumers set the framework for our uh, future businesses and we need to constantly look for ways to excite them. But what do they exchange their money for? What do they look for in a product into the future? And I started with Adi Dasla and I want to close with his words. He used to say, functionality, fit, weight, aesthetics and quality makes an Adidas product. Each element would not be sufficient by its own. It needs all parts together to make a perfect product. He always knew that we have to look at the entire process, respect all aspects and be passionate to detail. Only then we will be able to deliver the best product to the consumer. And I'm very confident that the future of the sporting goods industry looks very bright. 
We have a normal potential, and I'm also sure we will make use of it. But technology is at the stage where it has never been in the past. And we will be closing any gaps that still may exist as soon as we can. New materials promise us exciting features for innovative product. And last but not least, consumers. Consumers are excited by sport and by lifestyle products. And by bringing all these key enablers, design and manufacturing closer together, we can create, develop, manufacture, and bring to market all the consumers, uh, sorry, all the products our consumers are asking for today and tomorrow. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention, and I hope we will have an interesting discussion now. Thank you. There is no doubt that uh, our industry has a lot of challenges ahead to excite the consumer every day, and for that, we as an industry, be it the, uh, the brands, be it the manufacturers, be it the tier two and tier three suppliers, and being all the parties who are involved, we have to come uh, closer together to be more efficient and to be faster because the uh, demands of our consumers are changing every day and we want to excite the consumers every day that we have to work closer together and a forum like that gives an ideal platform to talk to each other, share ideas and uh, find out how we can cooperate even better in the future.